Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and are you using the best build surface on your 3D printer that you can? So I have had the opportunity, since I switched my build plate to a magnetic build plate, to, with removable magnetic plates, try out a lot of different build surfaces. And I have come to the conclusion through scientific inquiry, in other words, <laughs> trying them all out against each other, what is the best build plate? Now let's talk about your build surface on your 3D printer real fast. Your build surface is, in my opinion, one of the places where the prints are most likely to succeed or fail. A good build surface has to do two things. It has to stick and release. It has to stick while the print is printing. In other words, it should not even just kind of stick but curl up on the edges a little bit. No, it should be a complete holding it in place. And then when the print is done, you should be able to remove your print from the build surface without taking your build surface with it. Now, the easiest way to make this happen is with a state change. That is to say, if you have a heated build plate, then going from a hot build plate to a cold build plate changes the state of it during and after the print, and that can be used to create a change in the process. But even if you don't have a heated build plate, just having something that responds to a little bit more pressure than would normally come from the curling of the print is usually enough. Now in the early days of 3D printing, back when we were all building our 3D printers out of wood, Captain Tape was the darling of the day. Captain Tape is a high temperature tape and I got this roll of Captain Tape with my build uh, with my 3D printer when I first got it and I've still got a lot of it left because Captain Tape did not stay as the darling for very long. While ABS loves to stick to Captain Tape, the new polymer that was coming out at the time, PLA, did not stick to Captain Tape. So it's very rare to find somebody who's still using Captain Tape nowadays. And even back when we were using Captain Tape, we would say, yeah, but if it doesn't quite stick and if you're getting curling on the edges, then hit it with a little bit of an ABS slurry. We, we understood even back then that you had to put an interface layer between it. That interface layer did two things. One, it created a more... Uh, significant stick during printing and two it came off with the print when you were done which meant that the bottom of your print usually had whatever color of ABS slurry that you were using at the time and it wasn't perfect but it did the job very well there are still some people using captain tape and ABS slurry for their prints but we quickly moved on from that and people found that using, we, we would say blue tape, but it doesn't really matter. Any painter's masking tape will do. Now, painter's masking tape, PLA sticks to it really well. In fact, sometimes too well. And the prints would oftentimes pull up from it. And to prevent that, we would say, well, just clean it with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Or hit it with some Elmer's glue glue stick. Glue stick is a, is a great one because if it comes off the print, all you have to do is just rub a little bit more on. And this is a cheap solution and a great solution. And here's the best part. The, the glue stick sticks to the tape and the glue stick sticks to the print. So this works literally for ABS, for PLA, for PET, everything I've tried this on, this works. But... I don't like this to be the solution. I don't want this to be the solution because I have to constantly buy more glue stick and apply it print after print after print. So I went searching for other solutions. Now, BuildTac is a great build surface. ABS loves it. PLA loves it. PLA, PET, well, PET doesn't love it as much. So for PET, they say, hit it with a little glue stick. But then, what's doing the sticking? Is it the glue stick or the build tack? And the answer is, of course. And there are some polymers, some prints, some, some plastics that stick to it too well and rip the, the uh, build tack off your build plate. And when that happens, you have no choice but to replace your entire sheet 
of build tech, I find that you're going to get about three months out of a good sheet of build tech. Of course, there's the old standby of Aquanet Ultra Hold Hairspray on Glass. Now, the reason why this works so well is because there's good heat transference between the glass and the build plate. And the Aquanet, if you put a nice thick layer on there, becomes really sticky during printing if you have a heated build plate. And then after printing, it kind of re-solidifies and the print literally pops itself right off. Again, though, you have to reapply this over and over again. And is glass really important? Not at all. I've done it on bare metal. I've used hairspray on top of other build surfaces that people have. In fact, this is one of my original Gecko Tech build plates. They have some cool polymer on there. Now, how'd the Gecko Tech build plate hold up over time? It did great, but... ABS stuck to it a little bit too much. PET, not as well. There were other polymers that I just couldn't get off of here without sanding it down and just destroying the build plate. In the end, the Gecko Tech holds onto the hairspray pretty good, and so I just reapply it. Now, hairspray is flammable. Use it in an area where you can open up the window and be well ventilated. And I do not recommend using hairspray if you cannot remove your build plate. You have to take the build plate, in my opinion, away from the printer, otherwise you're spraying hairspray into your printer and gumming up the works. I don't like that, but it's up to you. The funny thing is though, I was running into a problem with these build plates. The prints sometimes would curl or do whatever they do and the, the nozzle would then grab it and create too much pressure, despite the fact that this is held on with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight magnets on there. Uh, it was not enough to hold it when the when the print curled up a little bit and it would pull it off and then the whole plate was off alignment and the print was a failure. The solution, somebody told me, was real simple. Just take a little bit of hairspray, not a lot, just a light misting on the back of the, the plate where it sticks to there and let it dry. Then when it heats up, it gets tacky and holds it on like glue and the entire print it cannot shift around it will not move i have not had a failed print since i applied a little bit of hairspray to the back of my removable build platform i mean if you've got a removable build platform hairspray is the way to go just don't keep it too close to your printer and use it in a well ventilated area but still that's something that you have to replace now the darling of the day among the 3D printing rep wrap community is PEI. And that's what I've got on here is a nice sheet of PEI. PEI is a plastic that PET sticks to really well. ABS kind of sticks to. And if you're going to use it for PET, you better get some glue stick. Seriously, we're back to glue stick again. The darling of the day can't even get away from glue stick. In fact, nothing I found gets away from needing a disposable interface layer, either hairspray or glue stick. I like using hairspray. It works for everything. And if it pulls up and sticks to the print, you just reapply a little bit more. But if it doesn't, you just keep using it and it sticks to, to the PEI likes to take the hairspray and hold on to it, so I use hairspray on my PEI. I get a nice build finish on the bottom, uh, but on my on my build tack, the build tack that I have on my um, Monoprice Select Mini Printer is about to die. It's had its lifespan, and so what am I going to replace it with? Am I going to buy another sheet of build tack? It's not expensive to buy build tack, but why when i'm just gonna have to replace it after a little while anyways i might as well just use painter's tape and and glue stick it, it kills me that this is the solution but it seems like to me there is no universal solution now if you are only going to be printing in pla then i say go with build tech it's it's honestly it's cheap it's easy it does a great job or go with pei or go with whatever you want and if you don't have a heated build plate PEI is great and if you do have a heated build plate PEI is great but if you're like me and you're going to be experimenting with a lot of different plastics a lot of different materials to print with you're going to run into one that either doesn't stick well enough to the build plate or sticks too well and damages your build plate in removing it and your best choice in that case 
is to use something that has a little bit of an interface layer. Now, again, it kills me that this is a solution. So if you've got a build surface that you think is better, that works great for everything you do, be sure to let me know in the comments. And hey, if you have one that I haven't tried, I've still got removable build plates that I can just switch it out, try it out on, and, and uh, I'm happy to try them out. So make your suggestions in the comments. And we'll see if we can make this happen and find something that's even better than these disposable ones. But until then, I'm probably sticking with hairspray, glue stick, painter's tape, whatever works. I thank you very much for watching. I've been working really hard on getting the supporter mosaic up and running. This has been one of the most rewarding projects I've ever worked on, on many levels. And there's still, of course, I'm going to keep working on that. And so if you'd like to get in on it, be sure to back me on Patreon. Be sure to back me uh, wherever you can. And even if you can't, just search me out on social media. I'm the 3D printing professor out there, usually 3DP professor. Give me a howdy because it means the world to me to know that you guys like what I do. As always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.